firstly, I'd like to thank everybody for your attendance here, not just attending for Oscar's Law, but for Deborah Tranter. 20 years she's given her life. 20 years. I'm trying not to cry when I, when I, when I mention her name. When I mention Deb's name, it, emotion does overcome me because um, people say, you know, you couldn't work in a pound or a shelter, but I certainly couldn't do what this lady has done and sacrificed 20 emotional years. Go, Deborah Tranter. Now, I have to read uh, from this because I, I want to say what I want to say and I, I don't want to forget. I really cannot believe that we need to be here today. Having a puppy farm rally, puppy farms should not be in existence. Puppy farms need to be abolished. Increasing penalties for puppy farmers is not the answer. Abolish the cruelty these farmers inflict is the answer. <laughs> Why are we talking about fines and, and, uh, and, and penalties? Abolish them, stop it. Yeah, it's not enough. I hope and pray that our government understands that they are accountable for the mass cruelty and suffering that these animals endure. Our government is the only one who has the power in, to stop a, and abolish puppy farms. Not us. We can, we can march every week. They've got to come up to the party. As the saying goes, if there is a will, there is a way. Serious discussions need to occur within our government, federal and state, addressing that the Australian public loves our domestic dogs and we do not accept or want these barbaric farms in operation. Please hear our voice. What is a dog? What is a dog? What is a dog to you and I? It's an extension of our family. We love her, we play ball, we go to the bar park, we go for the walk, she's our child's best friend. She's your best friend. She loves you unconditionally and when you've had the worst day and you come home to those loving, understanding eyes, she's your life saver without you even knowing it. For me, the first time I understood the meaning of love was due to my first dog, Sally. She taught me the meaning of such a powerful emotion, love. When our dog leaves this earth, we cry, we are heartbroken, we have lost a cherished friend. What is a dog to a puppy farmer? Let's see. What do we think a dog is to a puppy farmer? It's an industrial, yeah. it's an industrial breeding machine. It has no feelings, its life is not cherished, the dog is only seen as an income, the lack of veterinary care these dogs receive is appalling. The physical suffering they go through is unspeakable and the psychological scars are even worse. As their fertility weans, breeding dogs, male and female, are killed. They're not sent off to you know, a house and fostered out. They're killed, abandoned or sold off to another puppy farm for a cheap price in the hope they can get just one more litter. These dogs live and die a life of being a prisoner, a prisoner for profit. How do these farmers sleep at night? knowing of the poor conditions they have these dogs in. Having big brown eyes looking at you, searching souls desperate for the hell that they are living in to end. Yet the cruelty which is inflicted upon them is forgiven. A dog is a master of forgiveness. If you did this to me, there would be no forgiveness. What is a dog to our government? I, I don't know. You know, I'm hearing penalties, I'm hearing these great things. What is a dog to our government? Only time will tell. Please hear our voice. I just briefly want to talk about four ex-puppy farm dogs. Three days ago, only three days ago, it was Friday, a Maltese female dog was rescued from a puppy farmer. She is so badly matted, she looks just like Oscar, if not worse. She gave birth to three puppies. Two of those puppies died at birth. On collection of this dog, I immediately took her to a vet. We had to clip her rear end as she could not stand up properly. We also had to clip her stomach so her baby could reach for food. Here is her tail. I couldn't clip the entire dog because you know she's, she's her newborn baby and she can't go under anesthetic for another two weeks. But this is reality. There was another female dog also rescued. We had to sedate this dog to clip her as the mats were so barely embedded into her body that we had to cut into her skin. She has several stitches all over her tiny, tiny body. Another dog, Hope is eight years old. She is a cavalier cross Tibetan Spaniel. She has a grade four heart murmur, mammary lumps, rotten teeth and cysts all over her body. We tried conducting surgery on her, but due to her poor condition, her breathing was declining whilst under anaesthetic. 
so we had to cease the surgery. She's still alive, but we can't operate on her because she, her, her body won't take the, the, the anaesthetic. Hope has a daughter. Her daughter is seven years old. She was born and bred in a puppy farm. Apart from having mammary cancer, which we have since removed and rotten teeth, her emotional scars are so daunting. Faith hardly looks at you, she is so scared, and I'm scared for Faith. In an ironic twist, and this really gets me so angry, in an ironic twist, pregnant dogs and puppies are killed in towns and shelters every day. So we have puppy farms over-servicing over for breed, and we have laws in place, laws in place for healthy animals in towns and shelters, which state that these animals are to be killed. Something is terribly, terribly wrong here. The current legislation for our high euthanasia rates for pounds and shelters is another issue and no doubt will be addressed in another forum. We can't let this one go. Now, can you imagine your pet forcing your pet dog to live his or her entire life in a small wire cage with no human companionship, love, toys or comfort and little hope of ever becoming part of a family. That's what it's like for life for a breeding dogs in puppy farms and as Darren said, puppy factories, they're puppy factories. We need this cycle of cruelty that contrib contributes to pet overpopulation, the suffering of countless dogs and the landfill of animals in towns and shelters to also stop. Please hear our voice. Thank you.